Hi, I'm Andreas. I'm the team lead of our infrastructure and services team here at Axel Springer National Migente. Our team is creating an infrastructure platform to give our developers the possibility to run their services easily for our platforms like Build.de and Welt.de, some of the biggest news portals in Germany and Europe. Later on, I'm happy to be joined by Daniel, one of our senior DevOps engineers. Today, we want to share our solution on how to set up completely automated test environments in Kubernetes using GitOps and the GitHub toolchain. When developers start with a new feature, they want us to spin up a complete new test environment. And when the last pull request has been merged to the main branch, they close the feature branch and want us to destroy the test environment completely to avoid any costs afterwards. So this kind of test environments are called Phoenix environments. And for those Phoenix environments, we do have two stakeholders. At first, there are the developers. They test their code changes as close as possible to production. And so they can avoid conflicts on parallel development in different features, but the same project. The second group are the product owners. They want to have these Phoenix environments to test and approve new features before going live. And to do so, we give them a unique URL for each Phoenix environment. And why do we want to be as close as possible to production? We could do it the easy way and just create a new namespace in Kubernetes and deploy a few services and have a look how it's working. But what we do is to create a copy of the complete um, live environment including all monitorings, loggings, and many more services we have in place for our production system. Before we dive into the workflow, I want to give you a very short introduction into GitOps, which is a combination of infrastructure requirements, defined in YAML files and saved in a GitHub repository, and a service running in Kubernetes. In our case, it's Flux CD which continuously is watching the infrastructure repository. And whenever any changes occur, it, these changes will be applied to the Kubernetes cluster. The benefit for us to use GitOps is to get rid of old fashioned toolings like Jenkins, having complex CI CD pipelines and discussions within the teams who is responsible on which part of this complex CI CD platform. To set up the development teams to just be re responsible by creating the new image for the service, testing it, and uploading the new Docker image to the GitHub container registry. Now let's dive into our workflow. Let's say one of our developers wants to start creating a new feature. The first thing he will do is to create a new feature branch. And by doing this, in behind, a GitHub action, a very small one inside of the repository, will be triggered by the onCreate event. This one grabs the right information out of the feature branch, like the feature branch name and the project name, and hands it over to a more centralized GitHub action, which takes this information, grabs, pulls the right Flux CD repository where all the definitions for the live environment are in. It takes the YAML files, creates a copy, replaces some values, and pushes those new files back to the GitHub Flux CD repository. And by doing this, now the Flux CD service will notice, oh, there are some changes, and these changes to the Kubernetes cluster, creating a new feature namespace, and set up the Kubernetes resources like secrets, the configuration map. And by doing this, it tells the HAM operator to deploy all services needed to run this new test environment. These are the main features of our setup. And to tell you about all, all other features and look, have a look into the code, let's hand over to Daniel. Daniel? So thank you, Andreas.
And we want to share a screen. And here we go. So um, now we will perform a demo of a uh, life cycle of our feature branch and its corresponding Phoenix environment. And we do this from the perspective of a developer who some looks behind the scene of the creation process for a Phoenix environment. So first, let's assume um, we got a ticket from our product owner um, to implement video embeds on our news page. So our ticket has a number. Uh, let's say it's ABC minus 123. And that will be uh, used as a label to identify uh, our Phoenix environment. So first we start in the terminal and uh, we are logged in in one of our Kubernetes clusters and we will check if there still exists an environment uh, with this label. So we display all our available namespaces here. As you can see, there is uh, no namespace uh, for a Phoenix environment with a label ABC minus one, two, three. So then we go over to the browser and we will have a look on the production uh, state of our uh, news page. So as you can see, there is just a Twitter embed, but uh, the product owner says he wants to have uh, a video embed uh, above the summary. So as a developer, I go to our code repository and made there some small changes on the code. And I commit this on a branch with the name feature, feature minus ABC minus one, two, three, and have a short description here. So uh, with a commit um, to this branch, uh, we've triggered two actions in our project. So the first one is the CI pipeline of our project look inside and what we see we built a docker image and push this to the github docker registry and we use uh, the github api to create a deployment for our commit and set the state of this deployment uh, to state queued so we will come back uh, to this deployment later first we go to our second action and the second, the second action is the trigger for our creation process of the Phoenix environment. We just uh, collect some informations about uh, the Phoenix environment we want to create and uh, add this, uh, add this data to a payload and uh, create a dispatch workflow event for uh, on the GitHub API. And with this, event, uh, we trigger another action in our GitHub uh, Flux CD project. And this action takes the, um, the data from the workload as input parameters, and then uh, uh, checks out the repository and runs a script to create our Phoenix. And finally, it pushes back the data uh, the changed files to the GitHub repository. So let's have a closer look on the script we use here. So let's create Phoenix. And first we start and uh, make a copy of the production uh, definition of our uh, GitHub demo project. Then we use some tools like uh, YAML query and uh, in this case set, uh, customize these YAML files. So we set the namespace for our Phoenix and we add the Phoenix name as a label to the URLs of our project. And finally, we add the created files to Git. So the result you can see here, we created a new folder for our uh, demo application or Phoenix uh, demo application. And then we switch over to the terminal again. And let's see, my Flux have done its job. So list the workspace, uh, the namespace again. And you can see GitHub demo feature minus APC minus one to three namespace is created. And we will look what's inside. As 
you can see there are some pods and the service and you see our system is up and running and we go to the browser now so you can use this uh, test for um, automated test scenarios at this environment like end to end tests or for manual tests of your QA department or your product owner or stakeholder can make some approvals here so we will adjust the URL a little bit for this manual test so we are on a test cluster now and our system has a feature minus a b c minus one two three label and fire so you see the same article here but we got some new elements here a video embed above the summary So then we go back to our GitHub uh, code repository. And first I want to show you the, uh, the benefit of the deployments we have created in our CI process. So you can see a list of the environments of all the, of all environments you have deployed your application to. You can see here our uh, new created uh, Phoenix environment. Go in there, see, okay. This commit was deployed here. And there's another benefit you see in the main environment. You also get a history of all your deployments there and the final state they've reached. So all the old were inactive and the new one is active here. So then we finally reached the end of the life cycle of our feature branch. So usually we want to go here and say, okay, we make a pull request, then uh, we merge this pull request to the master or main branch now, and um, then we delete uh, our feature branch. So for the demo, we just just delete it. And with this deletion, we triggered a new action for deleting a Phoenix. You look inside. It's similar to the same as uh, on the creation, uh, creating, creating process of our Phoenix. So we collect some informations, create a payload of this, and make a workflow dispatch event. And what we also do here is, wait, back. We remove all the deployments we have uh, created for this Phoenix environment. So that's the first one we see here. The environment is gone. So we need that anymore. And then we go to our Flux CD repository. And here's also an action triggered for destroying the Phoenix. So nearly, nearly the same as uh, creating. So we check out our repository, run a script for destroying the Phoenix, and then push back the uh, changed files to GitHub. Also have a look at the script we use here. And it's short script, just removing a folder from our uh, project. And if it's work, you can see it here. It's removed there. So then we can go back to the terminal, clear it. And then Flux should have removed our namespace here. So. Have, remo have removed the uh, uh, namespace, and so we finally reached the <laughs> the end of the life cycle of our demo project and also of our demo. And we go back to Andreas and our slides. Okay, thanks, Daniel. So let's go to our last slide. Here we are. Okay. Okay, so let's sum up what we achieved. We achieved to have a setup with less than 200 lines of code. And with this setup, which is very dynamic, we can use many product, projects and services. 
It's completely automated and it's completely close to production. And which technologies are we using? We're using Kubernetes, FluxCD, and out of the GitHub toolchain, we are using GitHub Actions, the Container Registry, the Deployment API, and the repositories. That having said, we are looking forward to your questions.